My, my question also relates to a, uh, a proceeds of crime um, action. Um, I'd just like to ask a few questions about um, the ASIC or ASIC referral of the uh, uh, John Gay, ex CEO of Guns Limited, an insider trading charge. Um, w when did ASIC refer uh, John Gay's case to the AFP for the proceeds of crime investigation? Senior Senator, I just don't have that in front of me. I'll just see whether we have sure. information about that here. You've come prepared for the role. We'll have to take that. Yes, Senator, I'm sorry, but we'd have to take that on notice. I do remember the media reporting around this, and I know there was a range of uh, different inquiries that we uh, had in place with ASIC to establish those timeframes, but I just don't have it here with us. Okay, because I'll, I'll put some other questions on notice, for example, when, when, the, when you made a decision relating to your proceeds of crime. Um, but if I could just perhaps ask you about the, me the media reports. Um, I'm not sure if the AFP have an official policy relating to something like a proceeds of crime making decisions public? Is that something you normally do? Or do you do investigations quietly and you know, make internal decisions and not yeah, necessarily... Well, it depends on the circumstances. That clearly, uh, the one we've just finished talking about is not quite uh, no, as I'd like that. it to be. Yeah. But the, um, I mean, the issues around this uh, are very much done privately unless they're uh, orders or pr present in, uh, presented to a court or something like that. So. OK, because um, there was a, a media story which was published on January the 27th, which is, which is a, a Monday, a public holiday. Um, it was Fairfax Media and they quoted an AF, AFP spokesperson uh, talking about the fact that the AFP had decided not to proceed any further. Um, is that sort of standard practice that you might give a story to a journalist or did... No, no, I, I think that was in response to direct questions that were actually okay. asked of us uh, to our media team. And I do remember the, uh, the time, but I, again, the deputy might have some more information. Yes, yeah, Senator, it's, it's certainly not our, our standard practice to uh, publicise our proceeds of crime actions because by their very nature they take a long time and there's a lot of litigation to go through. But ever, in this particular case and in others, mm -hmm. it's important to note that when making a decision about whether or not we proceed. It's also about the cost benefit of being able to recover funds Understand. from the individual. So if it, if it is an expensive exercise to litigate, yeah. and not only that, if we were to go and receive proceeds of crime funding from someone and we effectively bankrupt them, then what we may do is actually affect all the other potential creditors that mm. someone may have. And so by default, the Commonwealth will cause harm to a whole lot of innocent parties. Okay. And those circumstances are more prevalent than you would think. So is it common for ASIC to refer these types of investigations to you relating to white, white collar crime? Uh, we are, the AFP is actually the responsible agency for um, uh, dealing with proceeds of crime under the Proceeds of Crime Act, as well as the DPP, yeah. but um, the Commissioner now has all the powers under the Act to be able to initiate litigation, and so we do that on behalf of Commonwealth agencies. So okay. ASIC, if they're not doing their normal recovery action, yeah. we can, they can work with us, also the ATO, if they don't want to use their powers as well. Yeah, Mr Phil, and that was where my question was going. I, I, I asked ASIC last week why they didn't proceed with their own action. Um, and they said, it was similar to you, it was relating to creditors, yep. that there may have been other actions. But why would they refer this to you? Is that standard practice or is it...? Uh, not standard, but no. um, they, we do get some matters from ASIC. And, and given that the AFP has only taken over this function for the best part of 18 months or so, mm. be, if I can be fluid with that date, um, the, we are getting more referrals from other agencies and we are taking more civil litigation than we are criminal matters as well. Okay. So in, in relation to your comments as to why the case was, was dropped, you, you provided three reasons in, the, in the, your correspondence with the, with the media. Um, you said um, due to the amount of time which had elapsed since arrest. Um, so I'm interested in that because uh, presumably obviously ASIC was going through their own inquiry. Yep. Um, how could it have been any different? Do you, could, you do, could you have done this independent at this, or parallel to an ASIC inquiry or do you always wait for yeah. ASIC to finish their investigation? No, no, sometimes we do them parallel. It really depends on the time. But it, a lot of this stuff predates when the AFP has taken over responsibility for proceeds of crime. Right, So okay. a lot of these matters uh, were between the DPP and relevant Commonwealth agencies. Uh, we've taken it over um, almost lock, stock and barrel for the last 18 months or so. So and now... So in this case, that your time of arrest would have would have included previous to you taking on this function. It, it would have been. I understand this is a number of years old. Okay. So in a way, that prejudiced, prejudiced 
an investigation? Oh, it, well, it's certainly one of the factors because if something's yeah. come to us now to invest for an action that occurred five or six years ago, yeah. then it's quite difficult to put together because if, if you're trying to work out the proceeds of crime and work out now that someone has got um, different assets in different names, purchased for different reasons, they have a number of creditors and so on that we end up risking mm. um, innocent third parties as well. Okay. Um, the other reason you gave was um, the judge didn't quantify the financial benefit derived in this case. Do you do you have independent resources to, uh, I suppose, evaluate these types of risks similar to what ASIC and that, that level of expertise? We would, except yeah. then, then again we have to um, we'd have to satisfy a court to get a quantum figure. So, mm. in other words, we'd have to go back over all the old evidence and relitigate it. And that's one of the things that's difficult difficult when you go back in time. We have to redo all the evidence to be able to uh, work out uh, to quantify the amount of a fraud to mm. the satisfaction of a judge, which is quite difficult. OK, so you, you, the judge was deciding in relation yeah. to the fine. So, sorry, sorry, Mr. Wood, did you want to... No, I said we, we, do have, we do have forensic accountants that put all this sort of stuff together. OK. Um, so, so you don't necessarily need a referral. You could have done this... Or you could, it could have occurred independent. Would you... How would that get on your radar? Uh, um, lots of different ways things yeah. get on our radar at the moment. Yeah. We've, take, we've got proceeds of crime action at the moment on foot from a number of criminal prosecutions that the AFP has done, yeah. another number of investigations done by other agencies, as well as matters that we've self-initiated ourselves at the moment in relation to the civil space, so mm. straight out civil forfeiture without any criminal action or criminal offences having been incurred. Uh, we're taking on those matters as well. Um, there are all sorts of sources of intelligence and information to be able to... Um, commence these types of investigations. So the proceeds of crime, just because I'm, I'm not a lawyer like my colleagues, it only relates to recovery of of funds. It doesn't relate to um, potential jail time or or other. No, other it's charges. only it's a, it's a confiscation of profits. So it's purely yes. it's purely. Uh, That's right. Okay. Um, so in terms of the creditors, was there any any discussion with with creditors on on this? I'd have to take on that on case. notice, um, Senator, but I'm, I'm not sure. I'd have to take that on notice. OK. Um, I seriously doubt it, though. Seriously doubt it. OK. Uh, but there was... You would have obviously had discussions with the ASIC. Um, or is it sort of handed to you in a file? I'm assuming so, but, Senator, I have to take that on notice, the exact circumstances around the referral. If you could, particularly yep. if I could get an idea of when, when the case was referred to you and when it was when you made the decision. Yes, uh, That certainly. would be quite useful. So how, how long that process... How yes. long that process took? That's all for me. Thank you.